Hey guys, Sandra here from Carcraft Auto Detailing in Melbourne. In today's video, I want to share and display some of the techniques, methods and products used to achieve quality repair work on worn and damaged leather seats. The global repair system I've been using, been trained in and will be showing in this video is by far the best I've ever come across. However, it's important to understand that it still is a repair and by no means perfect. And although the results can be extremely good, it's not like replacing the seats or trims with a new one. But for anyone that's had a leather seat reupholstered, at least as a quality job, you'll know just how extremely expensive both the labour and quality leather itself is. And you'll also find that it's virtually impossible to find the exact same leather and colour when trying to reupholster just one seat or a section of the seat, so it never really matches. And in the case where some owners aren't looking for perfection, but would still like the obvious tears, damage or wear in the trims and materials to be addressed, this is really a perfect solution. Also, the quality of finish achievable is largely based on the existing damage and condition of the seat or trim. So in other words, if the trim or seat is just too far gone, which I'll be displaying in one section, it's really impossible to get it back to a near perfect finish. Though, as you will hopefully see, it is still possible to improve it. And in the end, a balance of quality work versus time is a compromise that needs to be found. So I'm not doing this video and suggesting that you should buy these products and kits and you'll be able to achieve these results. As apart from the training, this is one of those areas that does require quite a few hours of practicing and tuning your skills to get the hang of it. But more so, I want this video to help display and show what goes into quality repair work as opposed to some of the cheaper quick fixes and hacks that mostly do more harm than good to your interior components. So as you can hopefully see, this leather seat has seen better days, with severe cracking, wear and tears. The first step after assessing the damage and deciding whether it is within the bounds of repair, as some seats are just too far gone and beyond any repair system, is to give the seat a thorough clean. Now apart from the dirt, oils and grime interfering with the repair, you'll find that once the leather is truly clean, it'll actually change a shade or two in colour. So it's important to ensure it's completely clean for the colour matching process as well. I'll add a link to my video on how to clean leather car seats in the description box if you do want a great and easy process on cleaning dirty leather seats. So once the seat is entirely clean, I'm using this Prep Clean product which is more or less a wax and grease remover that's been specifically tuned and dialed to work on car interior components as a pre-repair cleaning and surface preparation product to ensure that the repair products will efficiently bond to the surface. Next, I'm going to do my best to ensure that the existing leather and damage is leveled down and prepared to remove any loose or compromised leather, as well as do my best to create the most uniform and level surface as possible. If 
If you were to magnify the damaged areas of the leather, you'd see a lot of peaks and valleys, as well as the top layer of the leather starting to separate and come loose. So in order to achieve the best possible finish and durability out of the repair, it's important to get the surface as level as possible. This also means that you don't need to use as much filler in the cracks, as well as ensuring that you're not working or building on a compromised surface. I'll also add that the worst areas do need more sanding, while the areas that aren't all that bad just need a very light and quick once over to prepare the surface. Any obvious or loose bits of leather need to be firstly trimmed off and then using a medium grit sandpaper, around 600 grit or so, you need to ensure the leather is as level as possible and that any looser or more compromised peaks are removed which will actually aid this repair in both looking better and being more durable. Now with the surface prepared, I'm going to start with the more obvious and significant damage such as this cigarette burn. As you saw earlier, I used a razor blade to firstly clean around the burn and then remove the looser and damaged leather around the edge of the burn so that the filling agent will have a stronger and cleaner bond. The product I'm using to fill and seal the hole is a leather and vinyl heat activated compound. This is done in stages to create the best finish and strongest repair. So layer by layer, I slowly fill and then heat cure the compound until it's completely level and flush with the surrounding leather. And then using a non-stick silicone pad in the end to create that level finish. I'm purposely not using gloves as it's important to fill the surface with your fingertips, which is actually the best way to determine whether it's truly flat and level. I'll also add that this specific compound is both extremely strong and flexible once cured. So much so that it's actually stronger than the leather itself and completely permanent with an impressive bond and resistance to any further damage and wear and tear. As I explained earlier, some damage, such as in this next area on the edge of the seat, are just too far gone to enable them to be repaired or restored to a near perfect appearance. But as I do want to show the limitations of what can and can't be achieved, I'm going to start with this badly damaged and worn area first. It's quite plain to see that along the piping of this edge, it's almost completely worn down to nothing. Now, it's virtually impossible to rebuild that piping and restore it back to its nice curved finish as it really does need to be restitched and replaced. But at the same time, I can still strengthen it and largely prevent it from further deteriorating using the same heat activated compound. Now, once the color is placed over this area, it will be much less noticeable. But I still want to be honest in communicating that it will by no means look perfect. So my main objective here is to primarily strengthen and seal the area and secondly is to cosmetically improve it in the end. So once all the more severe holes, tears and damage are addressed, 
it's then time to treat and repair the cracks in the leather. For this I'm using a leather filler. Unlike the previous leather and vinyl compound that does need to be heat activated, this filler will actually cure on its own accord that takes anywhere from about 15 minutes to half an hour depending on the weather. Though at the same time, particularly in colder climates, you can hit it with a heat gun to help speed up the curing process. The most important thing to focus on in this step is to apply the bare minimum of leather filler that's required and that you ensure the application is as level as possible and that it does blend seamlessly to the surface. I'm just going to apply a small amount of the leather filler at a time and mainly using the small spatula but also my fingers in some of the tighter areas to ensure I have a uniform and smooth level finish. The idea is to squeegee the product into the cracks and also minimize the filler sitting on top, just leaving enough to create a smooth, seamless finish. On leather that is this badly worn and does have those large, deep cracks, it's really best to work in stages, as it's near impossible to fill such deep and damaged areas in one step. In addition, you'll also find that, apart from the deeper cracks and crevices on this leather, You'll also have some raised areas due to the natural creasing that are just too high to level down. So as I mentioned before, the worse the surface is to start with, the more limited you will be in getting a near perfect finish. But in the end, those peaks and valleys should be greatly improved, though in many cases such as this, not entirely correctable. So after the primary filling stage, I'm speeding up the curing stage with my heat gun and then lightly resanding the surface once again to get the surface as level as possible and then basically just repeat the process, this time paying a little more attention to the deeper cracks and damaged areas that do need the most work. I'll also add that I don't want to create a completely flat or textureless finish that does look synthetic. So I still want to retain some of the minimal naturally created creases in the finish so that it does look more consistent with the existing leather on the rest of the seat. So really I just want to fill perhaps 80 to 90% of the cracks to still retain some texture in the finish.
As you'll see on the rest of the seat, where the cracks really aren't all that bad, just a single application of the leather filler is more than sufficient to address the finish. And in certain areas, there is simply no need to apply any filler whatsoever. Another point that I do want to highlight is that normally I wouldn't be repairing, filling and colour matching a whole or half seat. And I'd normally be doing more of a blend repair job, which I'll be showing you shortly in the next area of repair for the top seat bolster. However, I did also want to show that although it's not always the most appropriate course of action, you can actually still repair a large area of the seat or the entire seat if you wish to. So with all the more prominent cracks and damage repaired, it's now time to mix and match the leather's particular colour shade. The Global Repair System does come with over a hundred different colour swatches, which all have measurement formulas to mix up the particular shades of colours. So once you find the closest colour swatch to the leather trim, it's really just a matter of following the measurements to achieve that particular shade of colour. You'll also find that leather really doesn't have a glossy finish in general. So there's also a gloss flattening agent that once added will allow for a more satin to matte natural finish. It's also important to note that you'll never have a perfect shade or formula for each leather trim that you come across. So although the colour swatches are a great starting point, you'll always need to adjust that formula to correctly match the leather surface. Using a clear masking template and a mouthpiece blower, you really need to always do a test spot on the area to assess the accuracy of the colours match. And be sure to let it always dry as it'll slightly change in shade from wet to dry. Sometimes it's just a matter of darkening or lightening the colour with black or white, but in many cases you will need to add specific colours to achieve the correct match. I'll also add that even on this same seat, the light greyish colour on the base of the seat is actually quite different to the yellow and greenish tinge it has on the top upright section of the seat, which is mainly due to how the leather has aged and been affected by things like wear and tear and UV rays.
Once I'm happy I have a near perfect colour match, I'm actually going to use a miniature air gun to apply it. Now you can actually use the mouthpiece blower to apply the colour as well. But for a repair such as this, I do prefer to use a miniature air gun, whereas something like an airbrush is just too fine for such a large area. So after a quick test to ensure that the consistency of the paint is flowing well and even, I'm just going to apply light even coats slowly building up and covering the surface. It's really important not to go too thick all at once and avoid runs or oversaturating the surface. But at the same time, you still need to keep the air gun fairly close to the surface of the paint or it will dry before it makes contact. This will then lead to a dusty and rough finish. So it's really about finding that perfect balance of distance, arm movement and a light yet adequate coat. The paint itself is a specifically formulated acrylic based lacquer designed for leather and vinyl interior trims, which actually tends to penetrate the surface as well as fill minor imperfections, yet it still has great flexibility in its finish. And believe it or not, many other interior repair systems use water based paints, which actually makes their durability quite poor. But one reason I really like this system is the quality and longevity of these paints that actually contain UV and chemical resistant properties that make them much more durable than any other repair system I've come across. And they really are more like a base coat and a clear coat mixed together. But at the same time you still need to appreciate that it's not going to be quite as durable or chemical resistant as a new clear coated leather finish. Hopefully you can see that the finish and repair here although not perfect, is by far improved, yet still retains a natural and aged appearance, with minimal and subtle leather creases still visible. In this next repair scenario, I want to show a more common and perhaps a more appropriate repair, where the side cushioning bolster is repaired and then blended into the rest of the seat. Now the preparation of sanding and leveling the surface, followed by filling in the cracks, is much the same as the last area I just did on the base of the seat. In this case I was able to fill 80% of the cracks here with just a single application, but the last 20% still did need a second application after curing to get them to the right level of being just slightly noticeable to retain that more natural look. Now as mentioned before, the top part of the seat does have a slightly warmer tone than the base, so I'm just adding a touch of yellow to better match that shade. And after a quick test spot, I'm quite happy with it and to proceed to spray painting. Now when doing a blend repair it's really quite similar to doing a solid area, in that you basically want to concentrate on just a repaired area, and you'll find that the overflow of the paint will actually naturally blend the repair. It's just important to make sure that you don't mask the opposing trim, 
or you will get a sharp line that doesn't look natural at all. Overall, hopefully you can see once again that although this is not perfection, it certainly is quite a successful repair that does address the badly cracked leather, yet still retains a natural and slightly aged look that really is more consistent with the seat's overall age and condition. I'll also add that this paint is super quick in drying and curing, so much so that within a couple of hours, depending on the weather, you can actually sit in and use a seat. Now, although it's not necessary, I do prefer to seal the finish with a nano interior coating, such as CarPro leather, to further increase the durability of the repair and its resistance to chemicals and wear and tear. The seat and repair work can also be coated after an hour or two, or if you heat the seat or repaired areas with a heat gun for 10 minutes or so, you can actually coat it immediately after. I also wanted to display that this finish isn't going to simply come off next time you clean the seat, as with many other interior repairs that I've come across. With a 1 to 5 dilution of CarPro Inside All Purpose Cleaner, the finish is still more than resistant to the chemical, yet it's still more than capable at cleaning the seat. You should really just use a light concentration of your interior cleaner on leather or just some soapy water, regardless of whether it's repaired or not as stronger cleaners and concentrations will both deteriorate the repair and the natural leather itself. Or better still, as I've discussed in past videos, just use a damp microfiber cloth to wipe your seats down once a week or so, which will usually be more than adequate to keep the surface clean if done regularly. And just on a final note, I also want to make clear that you're looking at this seat under some powerful and bright workshop lights that really do expose even the slightest imperfections. And in more normal circumstances and lighting, with the seat inside the car, I guarantee that the repair work will look almost seamless and perfect in comparison. But at the same time, I wanted to be as honest and forthcoming about what is achievable to what standard, and when and where this type of repair work is appropriate and successful, which does depend on many factors and circumstances which I hope I was able to highlight and explain. In any case, I do really hope this look at leather repair was both helpful and informative. Please like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for these videos and I'll see you guys soon.